Hey gang and welcome to your very first object oriented JavaScript tutorial. Now you may have heard that everything in JavaScript is an object, but maybe you're not entirely sure what that means or how it affects you when you're writing code. Now an object in JavaScript is quite like an object in real life. For example, a car. In real life, an object like a car has properties such as its color, the model, registration number, etc. And it also has things it can do. It can drive, reverse, turn, accelerate. So objects in real life have properties and things they can do. And the same goes for objects in JavaScript. They can have properties and things they can do. Now in JavaScript, these things that they can do, they are called methods. And essentially they're just functions associated with that object. So I'm just going to demo a couple of built-in objects in JavaScript inside the console here. So for example, I could create an array and store this in a variable. I'm going to call this names and this will store an array of names, which I'll call Ryu. And in fact, I can just press tab and enter now. Now we have those names. And if I type out names, then we can see this array right here. Now this array is an object and I said that objects have methods and properties. And we can see those if I expand this right here, we can see that we have right here a property called length. So an array, which is an object, has a property called length. And I could say names dot length to find out the value of that property, which is three. There's three elements inside it, Ryu, Crystal and Mario. Now, if I wanted to, I could also call a method on this thing right here. And we can see the methods inside this proto object. Now, don't worry what this means too much yet. We'll talk about that later on towards the end of the course. But for now, let's look for a method that we can use. Now down here, there's a method called sort. So let's try that. We'll go names dot sort. And now we can see they've sorted themselves in alphabetical order. Before, Ryu was first, but now Crystal is first, okay? So this array is an object and it has properties and methods. Another example of an object is the built-in window object. So when we write JavaScript that runs in the browser like this, we get access to this global object, which is like the mother of all objects called the window object. And that, like any other object in JavaScript, has properties and methods. So if I just type out window now, we'll get access to that global object. And we can see all of the different methods and the different properties available to us on this object. So for example, if we scroll down to I, we're gonna see an inner width property right here. And it says 798. So this is the width of this thing right here from the left, right up until the console of the browser window. And that is in pixels, right? So if I change the width of this now, and then I go down, in fact, I'll go up and close this. If I now say window dot inner width, then we should get the new value, which is 708 pixels, all right? So we have all of these different properties and methods as well on the window object. So we can see now how all of these different things in JavaScript are quite like real life objects. They've got all these different properties and these different methods, the things that they can do. Now, most things in JavaScript are objects, but not absolutely everything is an object. For example, null is not an object. We can't call any methods or properties on this. Likewise, numbers, booleans, and strings, they're not objects. They're all called primitive types in JavaScript, and they are not objects. I can demo this by making a boolean or a string. So I could say something like var name equals Mario. And if I say name now, then I can't expand this to see all of the different properties and methods because it's not an object. However, these things that are not objects can still actually behave like objects in JavaScript because JavaScript can wrap them in an object when we need to. And it does that silently in the background. For example, I might want to use a property called length on this string right here to find out how many letters are in it. I can do that. I can call name.length because JavaScript will look at this and say, okay, it's a string and you want to use this length property on it. Therefore, I'm gonna wrap this primitive type, this string inside an object temporarily so that you can call this length method on it. And we can give you an answer, which is five, all right? 
And we can see this string wrapper in action by actually creating a string in a slightly different way. I could say var name two is equal to new string, like so. We're creating a string object and we'll pass through Ryu here. And if I say name two now, we can see this string wrapped in this object. So now if we expand, we can see a length property and we can go to Proto right here to see the different methods associated with this string object now. So when we create a string like this, that is a primitive type, it's not an object, but we can still call these different properties and methods on the string because JavaScript can wrap it in an object much like we're doing right here. So we have all of these different things in JavaScript which are objects and even the things that are not objects can behave like objects and each object type has its own unique methods and properties. But we're not just limited to the object that JavaScript provides us with from the offset, things like window or arrays or this string wrapper. We can make our own objects as well. For example, we could make an object in our code that represents a car, and we could give that object properties such as the color or the make or the registration plate, and also methods such as drive or reverse. And this idea of creating our own objects and how they interact with our code and make things easier for us is at the heart of object-oriented programming and that will be the focus of this series. Okay then, so let's have a quick look at what we'll be learning in this series. I like to call this the ninja bus, but really it's the syllabus, but whatever. So first of all, we'll be creating our own objects using object literal notation and we'll find out exactly what that means in the next video. Then we'll be looking at JavaScript classes and constructors, which is some ES6 syntactic sugar to make things easier sometimes when we're working with objects. We'll also be looking at inheritance and method chaining. And then finally, we'll be looking under the hood to see what's going on behind all of these classes and discover what prototypes are and prototype inheritance. Now there's quite a bit to cover in this course and I would recommend that before you start, you do have at least a basic understanding of JavaScript. If you don't, then I've got a JavaScript for beginners playlist on this very channel. So I'll leave the link down below to that. For everyone else, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like the video and I'm gonna see you in the very next one.